Trilogy Rose Oil Review. In this video, I'm going to be talking about rose oil and the benefits it brings to our face. And then I'm going to be covering what rose oil can't do for the face, for the skin. I think it's important to cover this topic because there's a lot of hype about rose oil and there's a lot of marketing claims being made by Trilogy. So it's important to understand what rose oil can't do for the face. And finally, I'm going to give you my review of Trilogy's Rose Oil. Hello beautiful people, let's get started. This product has got only one ingredient, that's Rose Oil, so that makes my job easy. Rose Oil is extracted from the seeds of a plant called Rose Canina. For plant oils, the method of extraction plays a very important role in the efficacy of the product. The best method preserves most of the active components. Cold pressing is a good extraction method for plant oils. Trilogy uses cold pressing. Now, if there is any heat used during the cold pressing, then some of the efficacy will be lost. Hopefully, Trilogy is not using any heat during the cold pressing method. So, as far as extraction goes, it seems to be doing the right thing. Now to the benefits rose oil brings to our face. First, it brightens our face. How does it do that? Rosep oil has retinoic acid. Retinoic acid is an evidence-based skincare ingredient. Evidence-based means it's got a lot of studies to show, a lot of studies done on the ingredient to show that it works. And this is not something we can say for most of the ingredients that's used in the skincare industry. So retinoic acid, what it does is it helps with the cellular turnover. Now you see, all cells from the visible layer of the skin have to fall off at regular intervals so that they can make way for the newer, younger cells from the deeper layers of the skin. But sometimes some of these old cells don't fall off. They refuse to fall off. They're very stubborn. So what retinoic acid does is two things. It goes and gently nudges these old cells and thus makes them fall off and also increases, helps in increasing the production of the newer cells so that more new cells are getting formed in the deeper layers and they all come to the visible layer and replace these old cells and thus it brightens the skin. New younger cells brightening effect. The second way in which rose oil can help with brightening of the skin is through its anti-inflammatory property. Rose oil is very soothing on the skin. It can calm the skin and bring the inflammation on the skin down. Now this is important because anytime skin is inflamed, a pigment called melanin in the deeper layers of the skin, more of that pigment melanin gets produced and this excess melanin then makes its way up to the visible layer of the skin and gets deposited on the visible layer of the skin and the uneven skin tone and the dark spots that we see on the skin is a result of this excess melanin which is gotten deposited on the visible layer of the skin. Now all this has started because skin got inflamed. So rose oil helps brighten the skin by keeping that inflammation in check. It keeps the inflammation in check and thus the chances of the pigmentation, uneven skin tone, dark spots all get reduced. Rose oil can help in keeping the skin hydrated. Hydrated skin is soft, plump and all glowing. So how does it do that? The visible layer of the skin acts as a barrier. It has an important function in the sense it acts as a shield and prevents water from the deeper layers of the skin from evaporating into the environment. Now the cells on the visible layer of the skin are arranged like bricks and just like bricks have mortar in between them to keep them all together, these cells which are arranged like bricks also have a lot of ingredients which are like the mortar and they help keep all these cells intact. Now these cells have to be intact and strong for the visible layer to be an effective shield. One of the ingredients which makes up this motor that's holding the cells together is linoleic acid. Now if the amount of linoleic acid reduces, this barrier becomes weak 
and when the barrier is weak it does not do an effective job in preventing water from the deep layers of the skin from evaporating into the environment and so more of that water escapes into the environment that means skin loses its hydration that means it kind of becomes dehydrated and dry and that is not a good look it gives a very dull appearance to the skin rosehip oil is very rich in linoleic acid when you apply rosehip oil on the face the linoleic acid from the rosehip oil helps these cells it becomes the mortar in between the cells and helps keep the cells intact and thus it strengthens the barrier function of the visible layer of the skin a strong skin barrier means less water evaporation into the environment which means a very hydrated skin which is all soft plump and glowy the next way in which rose oil helps is by wound healing by wounds i don't mean any open wounds which has got fluids oozing out of it or anything like that i just mean some simple bruises and cuts and some redness on the face the retinoic acid in the rose oil can also boost the collagen production again retinoic acid is an evidence based anti aging ingredient so it's got a lot of studies done on it to show yes it does boost the collagen production now collagen is what gives the skin its structure unfortunately with age and with exposure to environmental nasties the amount of collagen in our body reduces now as the amount of collagen reduces skin starts to sag and that's how we get all these wrinkles and fine lines and all that now what the retinoic acid does is it gets into the deep layers of the skin and boosts the collagen production and more collagen means firmer looking skin there was a study done to show that when a product which had centella asiatica and rose oil was applied on the skin it improved the appearance of stretch marks it made them less visible not sure if it was because of centella asiatica in the product or the rose oil or maybe both of them worked, worked together if it is because of the rose oil it's because of the uh, retinoic acid in the rose oil which boosts the collagen production rose oil can help people with acne prone skin it does this in three ways before i get into the three ways in which it can help the acne prone skin a very quick note about why these pimples and acne get formed in the first place now pores are a bowl like shape that's found in our skin in here excess sebum and old dead cells get clogged once they go and clog the pores they attract a lot of bacteria and together they all have a party and out comes the white heads and the black heads and the pimples and the acne these are all the breakouts which is being caused by this huge party that's happening inside the pores so we need to keep these pores clean we need to make sure there's not much clogging happening in the pores so the two main things that's clogging the pores are the excess sebum and the old dead cells studies have shown that the sebum that clogs these pores sebum is the oil that's secreted by the oil glands on the skin now the sebum that clogs the pores is low in linoleic acid guess what rose oil is very high in linoleic acid now what happens is the sebum that's clogging the pores because it's low in linoleic acid it becomes very sticky it doesn't flow easily and since it can't flow easily it just goes and sticks there and clogs now the rose oil because it's high in linoleic acid it gives that linoleic acid to the sebum and thus the sebum becomes more flowy it can flow easily and that unclogs the pores Now the next thing which clogs the pores are the old dead cells. Now the retinoic acid in the rose oil they can help get rid of the old stubborn cells which are refusing to fall off. These old stubborn cells when they refuse to fall off that's when they make the way to the pores and clog the pores. Retinoic acid in the rose oil by gently pushing away this old dead cells it is making sure that they don't go and clog these pores now the third way in which rose oil can help the acne prone skin 
is by regulating the excess sebum production. Sometimes the oil glands on our skin produce an excess amount of sebum. And what happens to this excess sebum? This excess sebum all makes its way to the pores and clogs the pores. So it regulates the sebum production and tries its best to make sure that excess amount of sebum doesn't get produced. This property of rosehip oil where it regulates the sebum production is extremely helpful for people with oily skin. People with oily skin have an excess amount of sebum and controlling that makes rosehip oil very good for oily skin. Rosehip oil can be used for all skin types. It's got benefits for dry skin, oily skin, combination skin. Now that's a lot of benefits from rosehip oil. Now let me talk about what rosehip oil can't do for the skin. Number one, it can't add any hydration to the skin. It strengthens the skin barrier, works as an emollient, forms a thin layer on top of the skin and helps in preventing some of the water that's evaporating into the environment. Helps in retaining the hydration that's already there. But sometimes our skin will need more hydration. Rosehip oil cannot add any more hydration to the skin. That's the first thing. The second thing is, it's a nice add-on if you've got acne, but it doesn't treat and fix acne completely on its own. It can't kill the bacteria that's helping this acne grow. So you need a different kind of ingredient for that. So rosehip oil is a nice add-on if you've got acne prone skin, but it cannot treat acne all by itself. Now the next thing you need to remember is plant oils is made up of many different ingredients. One ingredient, no one ingredient is the main active component in there. So rosehip oil is not a substitute for a serum which has got retinoic acid as the main active component in it. Yes, rosehip oil does have retinoic acid which can help in boosting the collagen and can help with the cellular turnover but it cannot replace, it's not a substitute for that serum where retinoic acid is in a high concentration and is the main active component. Similarly, rosehip oil is a nice add-on to brighten up your skin but it can't replace the exfoliating chemical ingredient that you've got in your skin cabin. For example, you might have a skincare product which has got salicylic acid as a main component. Now salicylic acid can scoop in there and get out everything from the pores and completely cleanse the pores. Now rosehip oil is not a substitute for that. It can help a little bit with that exfoliation but it cannot replace any of the other chemical exfoliants that you have in your skin cabin. Rosehip oil offers a lot of benefits, a little bit of load of benefits. It can't replace other serums that you have in your skincare cabin. Having said that, it's a good little add-on product to put in that skin shelf of yours. Finally, to the summary of this product. This is a good product from Trilogy. It is a no fuss product. It is slightly more expensive than the other rosehip oils in the market. But if that's not a concern for you, if you're okay with it, it definitely is a good product. Now, when do you apply this? Apply it preferably in the night time. See, what happens with plant oils when you apply it in the daytime is they go and dilute the sunscreen. Now, you don't want any product to mess with that sunscreen because sunscreen is a holy grail. So, you don't want anything to go and dilute that. So, it's better to use rosehip oil in the night time. You might notice some peeling. That's because of the cellular turnover because it's getting rid of those old stubborn cells from the visible layer of the skin. Rosehip oil has got a very non-greasy feel, it feels very light, it gets easily absorbed into the skin. So if, it, if, it's, so if you're fine with it, you can even apply it under your makeup. That's it. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a like and do subscribe to my channel. It will really help me a lot. And one final thing, I have an email newsletter. It won't take you long to read the newsletter. These are just short bite-sized tips which will really help you. If you would like to go on the list, I will leave a link to the list in the description below. Bye for now and I'll see you in the next video.